about superstring theories. Yes. What is it all about? Well, in physics as we know it today, the best we can say about an electron is that it's a little point particle, although one that obeys quantum mechanical laws. So your classical picture of what it means to have a point particle needs to be modified, bearing in mind that there's quantum uncertainty. The electron has spin, and you can never quite say where it is. However, string theory modifies the picture by introducing what you might think of as a new kind of uncertainty. In string theory, an electron becomes a little tiny loop of vibrating string. So it's vibrating, and it's also subject to quantum uncertainty. So the picture is quite subtle. But in any case, if string theory is correct, then the relation between the different elementary particles is that the electron, the muon, the photon, the neutrino, and so on, are all different states of vibration of one basic string. Just like a piano string has a fundamental overtone and also higher harmonics. Mm -hmm. So uh, we could see it, it as 
some kind of music in matter, <laughs> so to say. Well, the richness of music depends upon the fact that we have not just a pure note, which sounds rather harsh to the human ear, but a pleasing mixture of the pure note with higher harmonics. In string theory, the different elementary particles are the analogs of the higher harmonics. Oh, that's beautiful. And this way, you're trying to understand, you ha you're having a new paradigm to understand how nature works, how strings function to integrate matter. Mm -hmm. And in this way, you have in 11 dimensions. Let's talk about it, because, you know, in Flatland, a book called Flatland, yes. uh, there were beings that, uh, 2D uh, beings, that yeah. were suspecting there was a 3D dimension. How do you suspect that there are 11 dimensions, and how you can imagine that thing? So one important thing is that nobody really visualizes higher dimensions. The reason it's possible to think about higher dimensions is that Descartes explained that one can express geometry in terms of algebra. And once one does so, having more dimensions just means that there are more variables in the equations. The reason string theorists introduced extra dimensions was not because they wanted to, but because they discovered when they tried to solve the equations that the equations work most simply in 10 or 11 dimensions. And that, together with the fact that the extra dimensions has given more room to make a model that resembles the real world, hmm. suspects, su suggests that it's really useful to have a theory that starts in extra dimensions. In this way, also, you, you're having some criticism. For example, Sheldon Glashow uh, says that uh, many people are desperately seeking super strings. What would be your point of view against this, this kind of thinking? Well, the most cogent criticism of string theory is that it might be too big a leap and maybe we'll never be able to understand it or prove it's right, even if it is right. And there's no clear answer to that criticism. It's a perfectly valid criticism, and it motivates many people to work on other things instead. Uh, on the other hand, I don't think anyone on planet Earth was brilliant enough to invent string theory because of trying to find a way to go beyond the standard quantum theory. But once it was discovered, it's kind of inevitable to try to study it. Trying to understand what superstring theory is, that is your call. In Certainly my goal is to contribute as much as I can to understanding what string theory is. And we have to be realistic. It might not be a goal that can be fully achieved, or perhaps not fully achieved by me. But anyway, whatever pieces of it I'm able to contribute have been satisfying. What kind of things makes you believe that you are in the right track? One, one criteria that is very interesting is elegance and aesthetics. Well, there are a lot of circumstantial reasons to think that string theory is on the right track, but I do want to acknowledge that the reasons are all circumstantial, which is one of the most cogent points made by critics of string theory. So first of all, although nobody anticipated this going in, it turns out that string theory forces quantum gravity upon us, while in the standard framework of physics, quantum mechanics doesn't get along well with gravity. So we know that quantum mechanics and gravity are both part of the real world. And somehow, the stars where gravity is important are made out of atoms where quantum mechanics is important. So there has to be one theory that describes both. And no one really has ever had a good idea about how to do it. But by an amazing, lucky happenstance, physicists working on string theory accidentally stumbled upon a framework that forces gravity upon you while the standard framework of quantum physics makes gravity impossible. Now, to me, that's the single most important motivation for studying string theory. It's also true that string theory has led to strikingly elegant models that are only qualitatively correct, but still they're qualitatively correct, for describing the elementary particles unified with gravity. And finally, it's true that string theory has had a lot of success in shedding light on other areas of math and physics. In this way, you're getting nearer to the dream of Einstein of finding a unified field. Well, we hope we're getting nearer, but let's not exaggerate. We're very much in the dark. And even if string theory is on the right track, it's mostly not well understood by people. As I have said, one of the points made by critics, which might well be correct, is that string theory could perfectly well be correct and beyond our reach to really understand. What kind of uh, data suggests that this is taking place really in the world, that we have some experiments or some data that really suggest that we are there or we are getting there. And what would be the one 
that would say to you, this is real proof. This is something that I can see as a confirmation of this theory. So I think a complete proof is beyond reach. Um, I can't even suggest how it might happen. Um, it's possible that an important piece of the theory would be proved if, for example, the LHC would discover new particles with the property known as supersymmetry. That would definitely not be a complete proof of string theory. But on the other hand, supersymmetry is a very important piece of string theory. I've spent a lot of my career working on it, for example. And if that were experimentally proved, that would be a lot of encouragement. And what the, are the implications for you of uh, really seeing that string theory would work? What would be the implications in practical terms? Uh, it's not likely that understanding string theory will have practical applications. You should think of the quest to understand quantum gravity as a little bit like the work astronomers do when they study distant galaxies. So if we succeed in understanding, for example, the expansion of the universe, or how the galaxies formed, or whatever astronomers manage to do with the Hubble Space Telescope or with other instruments. Uh, it enriches our understanding of the universe, but it doesn't necessarily have practical applications. And what would be the new areas you're touching right now? Nowadays, what are the areas you're working with superstring theory? Because there is the, what is called the M theory that embraces the different yes. branches of superstrings that right. you're trying to explore. Right. Physicists found string theory. It seemed that there only were five possible theories, and they all had quantum gravity. So having a new framework with five theories instead of infinitely many seemed like an advance. And certainly the fact that they all had quantum gravity seemed like an advance because Gravity is an important part of the real world, along with quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. But obviously it raised the question, if one of those theories describes our universe, who lives in the other four worlds? <laughs> well, in the 90s, we found that if you look at things in a more comprehensive way, quantum mechanically, then the five string theories that were traditionally understood are actually different limiting cases of one theory that we now call M-theory, which is our candidate for superunification of the laws of nature. So we've got one quantum gravity theory, and we only understand bits and pieces about it. It's hard to explain it properly. The pieces we understand are an incredible interconnected web. There's a vast, vast amount of knowledge in many different directions. Yet it's only tiny, tiny fragments of the whole picture. And there are many, many bits of knowledge and there are many connections known between different pieces. Um, and a coherent understanding of what's really behind it is definitely not available. But still you're trying, yes? Yes, we're trying. And, you know, Sometimes when one's reach exceeds one's grasp, or as the poet says, what's heaven for? <laughs>